Welcome back to J111. Um, this will be lecture five, or should I say episode five? Uh, in any case, today we're going to talk about interview techniques. So whether news, you're writing news or features, much of our daily work um, requires asking people for information. Thus, mastery of interview techniques is essential for effective journalism. In fact, um, there's no day that, um, or no story uh, that passes that, that is not um, filled with at least one, ideally two interviews to make it more interesting. So, bakit tayo mag interview or what is the purpose of interviewing? First is to get facts to understand the person, um, the source, to get to know their personality. Are they nice people in real life? Um, to help us understand the person better. Are they going through um, some problems in life or challenges that make them the way they are? Um, so it helps us put the person, especially if we're doing a personality feature, into context, their, their current context, um, not something that is fictional or not something that is just, especially for a celebrity, it's not the personality on screen. You want to get to know the person off screen. And then to get colorful anecdotes, if we are writing a feature about a place, about an event, then we want to do interviews with the people who who are from there or who participated in that event so as to be able to get the color, you know, the, the feeling of the people who were part of it, uh, their enthusiasm or their disappointment, whatever. So um, we are able to bring our readers to that place or to that event. Also to get perspective. Um, it's one thing to write about a player who scored a goal. It's another thing entirely when the player describes how the play happened firsthand. You know, so you can get the feeling of the person, what was he thinking as he was you know, um, trying to get that goal or when he failed to get the goal. Um, you know, uh, so the idea here is precisely to add color, we're able to get inside the person, get inside their sources, find out more than what meets the eye. And then the fifth, of course, is to maintain credibility um, so that our readers know we didn't just invent things, no? that we really talked to people who were there, um, eyewitnesses or the person himself, herself, um, and we get to introduce the, the source to the audience. Okay, now, there are four basic principles for interviewing. Um, and one of the things that's very important in journalism, um, whether you're doing news or features, is research. And we will be talking about that in lesson six, but just a little bit here. Um, before you even make an appointment um, with for the interview, it would be good to do some background um, research on the person that we are interviewing or the place that we are going to write about or the event that we are going to. So as much as possible, um, we try to get as much information as av available, whether it's information that can be uh, gotten online or the public library or a book, etc. Um, so as to familiarize ourselves with the subject of the story prior to making the necessary interviews. Um, if we're doing a, for example, a travel feature, one of the things that you should be looking at are who should I interview? And that you can determine through research. Um, so the value of doing a tremendous amount of research is being able to ask questions very few others have done. So you don't 
repeat something, if it's been written about, so why are you doing it again? Or asking the same questions. So the source might be tired of answering the same question over and over again. Um, so if you can think of a unique question, especially if you're, you're interviewing a celebrity and, and you know they're the hot celebrity of the moment. So usually they're tired of the same old questions no? and they get refreshed also when they find there's someone who has a more interesting question to ask. Um, so we can win the respect as well. So we need to also not be biased, no? not to think or ask leading questions that we already have a conclusion even before we meet the person. No? So it shouldn't be like that. Second is we want to establish a relationship with the source conducive to obtaining information. Okay, so you don't just come in from the cold and act like they owe you an interview. You know, nobody owes us any interviews. Especially um, if they have, if they're very busy people and you are really taking their time. So you have to be the nice one. Ikaw yung nangangailangan. So ikaw dapat yung uh, mabayat, no? Ikaw yung nakikiusap. Okay, so what of the, one of the things that you should try to do is to make your source comfortable. Um, how do you do this? Um, by, well, the standard thing is to introduce yourself, no? to tell them um, what the story is about or why you're here, you know? and then to see if it's possible to look for personal connections. No? Um, I remember in one interview, um, I, when I went to the office of the person I wanted to interview, I saw that he had many golf trophies on his shelf. So it helps if you, you know, you are curious about many things and you have a lot of stock knowledge that you can use to, um, you know, to fill the gaps or to make somebody comfortable. So, so my little knowledge of golf, I tried to um, use it. Ah, so, sir, uh, mahilig pala kayo sa golf. Ano, so, anong handicap nyo? Ganyan. So, nagkwentuhan muna kami about the golf. And then, it so happened that the day before the interview, he had his first uh, hole-in-one. So, he was kind of excited to talk about it. No? And so, so kwento-kwento. No? So, he, he was so excited and he was so happy to have somebody to boast. Uh, his hole-in-one. No? So, dahil ang saya-saya niya, dahil nakapagkwento siya, lahat ng tanong ko, sinagot niya. No? In fact, when I needed certain documents, because it was a news feature that I was doing, and I needed certain documents that some of it were not exactly public documents, no? because he felt so comfortable with me, um, he he immediately, you know, um, you know got got his secretary to compile all the documents I needed for me. You know? And all I had to do was wait for it and it was handed to me, um, you know, uh, very conveniently in a brown envelope and I didn't have to research the various documents. So what he did was, since he was the boss, so instead of my having to go to three other departments to get those documents, he told the secretary to get it for me. So all I had to do is wait and the secretary went to those three departments or called them up to send over to their boss the documents I needed. So, then on. So, if you are able to win over your source, then it makes the, it also makes the interview enjoyable for the interviewee and also for yourself. So, um, you still, you maintain a professional aura, but at the same time, not aloof or Old, no, you have to be warm um, so that they feel like they can talk to you. Um, and then, you know, nga, you establish a common background. So it can be the game, if it can be golf, or you know, the nice thing is there are a lot of UP people, you know, uh, UP alumni in the industry or you know, in various industries. So sometimes. 
that's the connection. So they ask you, oh, how's UP na ba? And then, um, and since you're the younger one, you have fresher knowledge so you can update them on what's happening. And, and sometimes that can be the start. No? They know they're, they're nicer to you because you're from the same school. Um, or maybe their children are in the same school. No? Once another time, um, no, another time, uh, the, the guy I was interviewing was the date of my friend in our prom. So it kind of, so the, the connection there was, um, I still remembered having met him in my junior prom. So I reminded him of that. And then, yeah, so we, we talked about mutual friends you know, before we started the interview formally. So it can help and establish a connection. Um, so let them know your main objectives. You know, it's always good that your interviewer, interviewee is not left in the dark. So uh, you give them a broad, a broad idea of what the interview will be about. Even actually, even before you meet them so that they can prepare properly. And um, if they, they can already um, think about anecdotes to tell you, or if there are documents that you need, they can also prepare those documents um, already. No? Um, and then the idea is to make them also comfortable is you mimic the source. What does that mean? Um, you have to be your appearance should be the same as your source. So, for example, if you're going to interview a businessman, so dapat naka corporate outfit ka. No, you can't you can't be in your jeans and t-shirt and go into one of the Makati offices. No, you will you will stand out like a sore thumb. Um, at the same time, you don't get dressy when you want to interview a construction. Uh, engineer, no. If you're going to a construction site, you have to look the part. That's when you wear your jeans and t-shirt. No, you don't come in with your heels in your corporate affair, and then you're there in a construction site. So, uh, or or appear like in a corporate outfit, and you're in a uh, let's say a sports arena. No, so you're again you're out of place. So you have to dress the part. Um, even if sometimes you have to um, go out of your way. No? So, for example, you're going to meet the person in a cocktail, um, you know, sort of like a pre-party, whatever. No? So, you or a, it's, a, it's a Filipiniana affair. So, you can't go there in a normal polo or a normal dress. Uh, even if you're corporate, no, if it's a Filipiniana affair, you have to dress Filipiniana. You have to be part of the crowd and not something like, a, you know, you're sticking out. Because that will not make your source. And then you, the, the last thing your source wants is to be seen talking to you who is so obviously out of place. No? So you want them to be comfortable talking to you. Third is to ask questions that are relevant to the source and not induce the source, and that will induce the source to talk. So don't ask them about somebody else, no, unless the story is about somebody else and they're 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 the a good friend of that somebody else. But um, stick very close to the topic at hand. Don't digress. Uh, so asking. Questions that digress is not small talk. It does not endear you to your source. No? So, um, cuento is not questioning. Um, so, when you are actually in the formal interview, then um, stick to the relevant questions. No? I suggest that you ask uh, the more important questions ahead in case the source has to leave or has to shorten the interview. Maybe something came up and they have to run off. Um, so, tapos nabitin ka kasi hindi mo natanong yung gusto mong itanong. So, yeah. So, you ask them more important. After you make them comfortable, ask a few easy questions first before going to the 
the more important questions. No, but don't wait until the last minute to ask important questions. Then some preparation is good so that they have their facts handy. Like I said, it's good that they know in advance what the topic is about. Also, you, you don't think of questions right there and then. No? You should already have a set of questions written down. And it's perfectly all right to look at your notebook um, for, for the questions that you had thought about. No? In fact, it's perfectly all right to read from your notebook. You know, you're, you're showing them um, your notebook and, and some of the questions. No? Um, sometimes you have to, you even have to prepare the secondary questions. So if they say this, this is what I'm going to ask. If they don't say this, then I follow up with this question, right? So, um, and that's the tricky part, okay? Uh, now, there are many types of questions. I have a few written down on the screen. The more important one is the what we call the open-ended question. These are questions that the person will have to explain himself instead of the closed question, which is answerable by yes or no. no? Uh, ano ang closed question? Kumain ka na ba? Hindi pa. Oh, so that's a closed question. So tapos na yon. Tapos na yung usapan. So an open-ended question would be, anong kinain mo? What did you have for lunch? Instead of did you eat lunch? Yes or no. Have you, what did you have for lunch? That's an open-ended question. So that's what you ask. Um, so you phrase your question. That's why, that's, that's why it's so important to prepare your questions ahead of time. So that you can um, phrase it in such a way that they will have to answer. You know? Especially if um, I've had sources where, you know, yung mga may taong isang tanong, isang sagot, tapos, tapos wala na. Tapos ayaw na nila magsalita, di ba? So, the last thing you want is to get stuck in a rut of silence and then you have nothing to ask because this person is a yes-no person. But if you force them to talk with an open-ended question, then... Uh, you will get more information that way. Um, all right. So sometimes, though, you have to ask a yes or no question. Um, that's when you want them to categorically admit to something. So you're talking to a, let's say, a baseball, a basketball player. Are you staying with the UP team? So at least masabi nilang yes or no. Um, so so that's it. No, so you only use um, closed questions when you want a categorically a categorical answer. Um, and then it's also good to prepare clarificatory questions or at least to have it at the back of your mind. These are questions that you can ask there and then. You don't. It's not something that you actually think in advance no it's because it's a, the kind of question you only ask when the source is not clear about his his answer no so there are many ways to ask this so one is to repeat what the source said no sir kanina sinabi mo ganito so tama ba ganito yung pagkaintindi ko ta 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 ta, ta. Then they'll clarify, ah, hindi, ito yung ibig ko sabihin. Cha, 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 cha. So, so they are the ones who um, clarify, then they clarify what they meant. No? Sometimes what I do is deliberately pretend I didn't understand them so that they will expound their answer. So, for example, medyo nabitin ako dun sa sagot nila. No? Kahit na clear naman yung sagot, pero I want I want more things to be, I want to be able to quote more things. So I'll deliberately get something wrong. So of course, their reaction would be, no, that's not what I said. I said this, cha cha. And you know, I meant this and there and what I really wanted, da 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 da. So you have more information to work on. Um, and then sometimes it's, it's, 
also to one way of clarify of making a clarification question is um for example you're you're trying to get the opinion of a person um up that is different from the opinion of let's say everybody else in his team or everybody else in the in that show so that's one way of asking no so um madam you know um i heard that most people believe this what about you do you agree do you believe this as well etc no so then it it clarifies where the person is stands no what what is the opinion of the source no? so there are many ways of doing that as well now sometimes when you don't sometimes the best clarification to make is not to say anything one of the ways that i try to get the source also to talk is to just nod my head and then not ask anything so the source feels like i kailangan ko pa magsalita, di ba? Because otherwise, there's silence. No? And somebody has to break that silence. And the idea is you're not the one who breaks the silence, but the source. And usually, they break it with by giving you more information. No? And sometimes, the information that they give is actually the one you're waiting for. No? Or the ones that, that are more striking than the standard answers that they would normally give. Um... So yeah, so there are various techniques, and you have to mix and match uh, the way you 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 ask questions. No, then there's the what we call the funneling. No? So uh, this funneling uh, is only good if you have a decent amount of time with the person, and you have time to get to know the person. Okay, because if the person is hurrying, this is not ideal because it takes time it's a series of questions that become more or less restrictive at each step starting with an open question ending with closed questions so this is what you this is the type of question when you're trying to make somebody who doesn't want to talk talk it also means that you have to be very patient and that there is time to ask all your questions so for example question one Tell me about your most recent holiday. So it's a very generic. And then question two, what did you see while you were there? So it's a little more specific. Then it gets, as you can see, questions one to five on the screen. It gets from very generic to quite specific. And that's what we mean by funneling. So you start with something very safe, very general, and then you move down the funnel. The funnel is, you know what a funnel looks like, no? um, until you get down to the specifics. So the questions in this example become more restrictive, starting with the open question, which allow you for very broad answers, and then towards the more restrictive. No? So, um, yeah. All right. And then the fourth principle, of course, is to listen. Kasi what is the point of doing the interview? Tapos hindi ka naman pala nakikinig. No? And worse is, kung mahalata yung source mo na yung tape recorder, yung, yung telepono mo, yung recording, um, yung recording equipment mo yung nakikinig at hindi ikaw, you're gonna stop talking. And in fact, you're going to leave the, a very bad impression with the source. So you have to make the source feel like he's the most important. Me, I make an effort to make the source feel like at that moment, they are the most important person in the world for me. At that moment lang naman. No? Um, meaning, talagang nakikinig ako. No? I make eye contact. I take down notes. Nakita naman niya yung notes ko. I mean, well, I don't show them yung notes. But I mean, nakikita niya yung nagtatake ako ng notes. Hindi lang ako nagre-rely sa record machine. Because, you know, no matter how technologically advanced we get, technology sometimes fails. But a ball pen and a paper does not. No? So it's always good to have backup. So I always use both. Um... And then, like I said, silence allows you, allows the speaker. It also gives them time to think 
Okay, yung hindi yung you ask question, wala silang sinabi, barakagad ng another question. No? You give them time to think. Uh, because remember, for many times, it's the first time that they're going to think about an answer to the questions. No, you've thought about those questions like days before, but it's the first time that your source will hear it. No? So you have to allow for time to think. Don't rush. The, the worst thing you can do in an interview is to rush your source because they were going to, they're just going to shut up and shorten that interview. Okay, so you have to make them feel like you have all the time in the world. In fact, sila dapat yung, okay, medyo time na. No? Um, yeah, especially if they're very busy people. Um, although, it's happened that the interview went so smoothly and then we enjoyed ourselves very much that the speaker who, in, uh, the source who initially told me, I only have 10 minutes, ha? Okay, and you know, in the end, we talked for 30 minutes up to one hour. Um, because they also enjoy the conversation. No? So the idea also of asking questions is to make it feel like a conversation so that your source doesn't feel like it's an interrogation. No? The last thing you want them to feel is like they're being interrogated, a la NBI, like that. So no. no. So you want it to be friendly. You want it to appear like a conversation. And that's a trick that you have to... Um, in a way, you have to develop. No, it's not something that's um, automatic. It's not something that 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 is easy. Um, but it also takes a lot. It it also means that you've done a lot of background research without appearing so. No, without appearing so. So, um, magugulat na lang yung source na but wow, wow, dami niya alam like that. Um, and then for me also, by looking a person in the eye, I can see if they're being honest with me. And I realized over the many interviews I've done is that people who are not honest cannot look at you directly, unless they're super callous, okay? So there are real corrupt people that can look at you in the eye and lie through their teeth. But Generally, generally, people cannot look you in the eye if they cannot, if they're not saying the truth. No? So, so that's one of the ways to, um, yeah, to help gauge no, also the person no, um, that you can that you can look at them. All right. So basically, that's it. And the key to interviewing is the questions you will ask. Ask Thomas Kuhn, the um, patriarch of research and paradigms, have said the answers you get depend on the questions you ask. Okay. So homework time. So the homework is to write. Oops, what happened? Okay, so the homework is to write a personality profile about a classmate. Um, if you see on the syllabus, there are there's a on the second page there is a table um, where there are three or four names within the table from groups one to five, five I think or six I can't remember. Um, all right, so. So, so that, that is your group. So you have to arrange it that person one will interview person two and person two will interview person three and person three will interview person one. So it's like a round robin. So with outside the class are, or within the, within this class, I mean, um, you can interview each other. Um, you can set a different Zoom appointment among yourselves. Since we have time, I'm not going to use up the entire period during class, during our class period. So you can um, make your own Zoom meeting among yourselves um, to do the to do the to do the interview. No, so you can. So um, no email questions. Okay, it has to be a live interview. And you submit to me 
the both the Zoom interview recording as well as your feature on your classmate. Okay? Um, so, yes. <laughs>